Today, guys, I've got a pretty cool topic for you, and that's how to get incredible graphics in your Guild Wars 2. Through most videos I do now, I get a comment here or there of people saying, hey, how did you get your game to look that good? Your game looks far better than mine and I'm just watching it on a YouTube video. The answer to this really, for the past month or so now, has been the use of Reshade, which is an incredible platform for post-processing shaders that can come from anywhere. What this means is you can turn off your in-game post-processing, which can lose you a lot of detail on distant lands through its like incredibly overpowered bloom, as well as a bunch of other poor effects, and implement your own that are far more preferable. Specifically, where Reshade is better than other post-processing injectors, which I'll talk about in a second, is it has the ability to do a lot of depth-based effects. Depth-based stuff being things like depth blur, blurring distant areas comfortably the guild wars 2's default method of doing this is incredibly ugly but then many other things too like forcing ambient occlusion a feature which did now become natively supported in guild wars 2 quite recently but through reshade you can fine tune it however you like as well as a myriad of other effects that guild wars 2 doesn't support such as god rays god rays this game handles by just dumping physical boxes of light in caverns and things as you can see here while through reshade you can dynamically generate these god rays so they'll appear in any map at any time as long as the sun's in the right position and the lighting uh, qualifies for it. So this is actually the third video I've done on a topic like this. The first one I made was on something called Sweet Effects. Later, I topped that off by doing one on Gem Effects, both systems I've used before. I've now moved over to Reshade and I doubt I'll be moving ever again really. And the reason for this is Reshade is the logical development of both of these other post-processing injectors. They're actually included in Reshade. If you try to get those old versions of Sweet Effects on its own, you'll find the latest version is Sweet Effects 1.5 while in Reshade, Bundled is Sweet Effects 2.0. Yes, these developers are all collaborating with one another under this umbrella tool, Reshade. What Reshade does is it collects the various post-processing injectors people have made under one big umbrella, and anyone out there can create their own shader, and then any user can drop that new shader someone's made into Reshade, and it will work and mesh together wonderfully. So this is really the power of Reshade. This is why it's so strong. You haven't seen too much of it be used in the Guild Wars 2 community. There's a couple of reasons for this. Number one, the official non-beta release of Reshade was just a few days ago as the posting of this video. It was August 10th, 2015. And for that reason, I think uh, it may not have caught on a little, though it has been uh, openly available for many, many, many months now. But the other really crucial reason it hasn't seen use in Guild Wars 2 is that these depth effects, the things we really want to use it for that give it advantages over, say, Sweet Effects Standalone, which is kind of the standard thing Guild Wars 2 community members use, these depth effects are disabled in multiplayer games. Guild Wars 2 is a multiplayer game. Why does it disable these effects in multiplayer games? Specifically, it's because they don't want people to view Reshade as cheating software. And in first-person shooters, I believe through using this depth stuff, you can somehow cheat in games. But that's not relevant for us in Guild Wars 2 at all. So seeing this, a while ago on Reddit, someone created a tool called the Reshade Unlocker. And what this does is reverses that disabling of network games for Reshade and allows us in the Guild Wars 2 community at last to use these wonderful depth-based effects like the God Rays and so forth and really tap into the full power of the Shader Sweep. So that's what I want to talk to you guys about today, how to install it. It's actually very simple. There are three links in the description below. You're going to want all of them. The first one is Official Reshade. You're going to want to download that. The second one is the Reshade Unlocker. And the third one is called Master Effect Reborn. What Master Effect Reborn is, it's one of these shader suites that has been created for you to drop into Reshade and use at your will. And I find that Master Effect has all the capabilities of Sweet Effects, has all the capabilities of what you saw in Gem Effects, which was in fact always just borrowed from Master Effect anyway, plus more, all in one easy to find place. And that's what I'm going to talk you guys through. That's specifically why I use, I use Reshade, Master Effects. That's how you get what you can see on the screen rolling through so far in this video.
All right, so on my screen here, you can see I've got a uh, clean installation of Guild Wars 2. I've got a bin with nothing installed in it whatsoever. I've got GW2 EXE and the, the, and the DAT. So if I were to run this, I'd just be able to jump into the game. So this is completely fresh. You can make this easily yourself just by dragging the .DAT and the EXE into any kind of new folder on your desktop. Then you run it, it will generate the bin and everything for you and you're done. So this is a totally new, fresh Guild Wars 2. This is how you would do the entire install. First, you want to go to the first link in the description and you will come to the reshade main website you can uh, read a little bit about it here. Uh, this is an advanced, fully generic post-processing injector. I've already kind of done that explanation for you guys. Um, and as we come down, you'll see there's a little download button. And that will give you this archive here, the Reshade Framework 1.0.0 or whatever version ultimately you end up getting by the time you watch this video. If you check the README here, they do actually describe a manual installation, which is what I would recommend because it's a lot easier. Now, uh, you can read the section if what I say in the video doesn't make too much sense to you. But basically, what we're going to do is determine what kind of game Guild Wars 2 is. It's a 32-bit game and it is also a game that runs on DirectX 9. So what we need to do is grab the reshade32.dll because it's a 32-bit game and we want to drop it into our Guild Wars 2 folder. Now what you can do is just drop it into the regular folder like so and this will work. If you install just into regular Guild Wars 2 it will work for now but sometimes ArenaNet put out patches that breaks this. So instead what I would recommend is you install into your bin folder which also works and this will kind of future proof you. So this is often where you'll find people install stuff to. So here we can see it's here in the bin reshade32.dll and this is a DirectX 9 game. So if you look in the manual installation it says if it's DirectX 9 then you need to rename it to d3d9.dll. So we're going to come over here, we're going to go d3d9.dll and then we're done. That's pretty much it. We don't actually need in theory any of the other stuff that Reshade comes with. Now for our purposes, because we're going to be using Master Effects, we don't actually need anything else that comes in this archive. However, if you want to use like the default Reshade stuff, which I find is kind of weird and I, I'm not a massive fan of, but it is very powerful, has a sweet effects included as you can see, it has gem effects, has MC effects and so on. If you want this stuff, all you then have to do is uh, copy and paste, Reshade the folder and Reshade FX also into your bin and it will work. In fact, let's do that here and I'll show you guys. So that's now in our bin. And uh, if we go and we run GW2.exe, you'll see as I hit my character select screen, we get a bunch of stuff comes up. Reshade is running, as you can see, and it's said in the middle here that gem effects was detected. All the things that it came with by default were detected. Now, if I were to toggle it on and off, you wouldn't necessarily see many changes because many of the effects haven't been turned on, but we know that it is installed because it gave us those messages. However, all that said, I don't want to use their default stuff, so I'm going to get rid of the Reshade folder, and I'm going to get rid of Reshade.fx. Next, we're going to get Master Effects. So go to the second link in the description and you'll be on the official thread for Master Effect Reborn. Um, and this tells you all the features that it has. As you scroll down here, you'll see a lot that you recognize. You'll see uh, SMAA, which uh, Sweet Effects offers. You'll see a bunch of stuff that you were previously finding on Gem Effects, if you use that. And many, many, many other new ones. So you're going to want to get the current version, which is right here for me currently. Here we go. So this is the archive you'll get. And we're just going to grab all three of these and again drop them into our bin. This time when we boot the game up, you'll see in the center it only says Master Effect Reborn. So this is the one shader suite that I want to use here and demonstrate in the video. But really if you want to get different effects, that's all you've got to do. You find them on the forums, you drag them in, and then you may have to write in some of their configuration files uh, what reshade needs to point to. You'll always find that information in the readmes though, and that's pretty much it. So with that done, we can leave the game up. This is something pretty cool that uh, I wasn't ever really doing with sweet effects or anything like that. We can leave the game running. Let's uh, let's log in somewhere. This is just vanilla Guild Wars 2 right now. Because again, though we have installed it, we haven't turned any of the individual effects on. So we're going to Divinity's Reach here. So here we go. As we can see, we're in Divinity's Reach. Nice and normal. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back into my bin. And we're going to open up MasterEffect.h. If you've ever used Sweet Effects, all of a sudden things will become very obvious to you what's going on here. Master Effect H is where you turn, you do all your configuration and you turn stuff on or off. And you can do this real time while you're in game, which is uh, really good for tuning and figuring out exactly what you'd like to do. For example, we might like to turn on Vibrance. So I'm just going to turn this zero into a one. Toggle it on, and as you can see, it saturated the hell out of all of the colors, and that even hurts my eyes a little bit. So what you might then decide you want to do, really, 
is uh, tone it down. So once you've enabled an effect, which are all appearing here at the top of the master effect stuff, if you scroll down, you'll find individual things that allow you to fine tune those effects. And this is really where it's so strong. So here you've got uh, vibrance and you can see that there's a, a numeric that describes how intense it is. So if we turn this numeric up, it's going to get even worse. But if we say turn it down to, I don't know, 0 0.2, uh, you'll see it then desaturates it. In fact, if we were to go negative 1, 0 here, you'll see we, we remove all the color altogether and we kind of get like a grayscale image in the background. So this is the, the basic way that it works in principle. And you can just scroll through a variety of effects as you like. So let's just... Put that back to one and toggle them real time. It will recompile it each time. And this really helps you figure out exactly what's changing instead of constantly having to turn on and off the client and compare screenshots and all kinds of horrible stuff like that. So to move on, what kind of new effects are there available? Master Effect won't let you do anything crazy, crazy, crazy extreme, like turn it all into looking like a storybook. Those will be other shaders you download online. But for general gameplay purposes, there's a lot you can do here. One of my favorite like fun ones that you never really want to turn on for the game is Heat Haze. And when we turn this on, you'll see it's like we're in a really hot area. You know, let's say I filmed this video in dry top. Oh, it's suddenly fitting, but it will play everywhere in the game. So you've got heat haze. Let's look at depth. Now, depth are um, some of the things that excited me most. I thought depth of field looked fantastic. I don't know what the default settings are like, so let's just toggle it on. All right, and as you can see, it's actually blurred the background just a little bit over there. Now, I'd love to move around in game for you guys and show how this looks. But there's a problem. The second I move... Reshade's going to detect that I'm connecting to the internet and doing stuff on the network and it's going to disable itself And that's because it doesn't want to be cheating software So here as we move in just a moment or two I believe there you go See it just toggled everything off and now that that's off It's not going to be working anymore So that really sucks and this was the reason why a lot of people couldn't use reshade for a long time Never fear this extra thing has come to save the day So go to the third link in the description and uh, you will find the Reshade Unlocker. So we're going to want to download this. This again was posted by someone on Reddit who'd specifically been using Reshade for Guild Wars 2. And we just have two things in here. You're going to want both of them. ReshadeUnlocker.exe and the ReshadeUnlocker.ini. Now, even though you installed uh, Master Effect and Reshade into your bin, you're going to want to put this into your main installation directory. So you're just going to want to dro drop it directly into here. And that's because when, what's going to happen is instead of running Guild Wars 2 EXE anymore, just like with ICM, if you've ever run that, you're actually instead going to be launching Guild Wars 2 from reshadeunlocker.exe. If you actually go in the INI, you see it's going to look for two things. It's going to look for the game ex executable, and then it's also going to look for that D3D9.dll we put in the bin, and it will find it in the bin. So all we have to do now is double-click this, and it will run this little box, and this will disable reshade's network locking. And so then we can play the game just like normal, it will boot up, and those effects won't disable for you. So it's really as simple as that. If you don't like the idea that you're going to have to run this instead of GW2.exe in the future, like it irks you for some reason, and I can, I can see that for some people, you can just simply create a shortcut to it, as you can see here. Uh, rename the shortcut to just, you know, Guild Wars 2. Uh, and then continue and then you can go properties on the shortcut you can go change icon you can browse directly to your guild wars 2 installation directory pick the icon hit apply and oh look it looks like regular guild wars 2 you can even then pin that down here if you're on windows 7 plus and whenever you click it immediately pop up your reshade this will work away you can ignore this completely this doesn't you don't have to do anything with this it will close itself when it's done and launch the game. And there you go. Master Effect is working. Everything will work as you like it. You can see there's now a bit of depth blur going on. List, my main character is in focus, while the stuff in the background is not in focus. Uh, and you can see the characters back here. Some of them are blurred, you know, which did, depending on which is which. And uh, that's really the way that the game works. It can really make various things pop. You've seen plenty of examples of it being used in this video. A couple of things that I would like to say. Specifically when it comes to the depth effects. Now depth blur does look fantastic. I really like, I can't stand this friggin uh, vibrance that we've got going on here. Hold on, let me turn this off. The depth effects are really pretty, but they do one bad thing. And this is apparently something that will be updated in Reshade at some point in the future. Or at least they're looking into it at the moment. I thoroughly hope that they do eventually resolve this. And that is the way that depth based stuff applies to the UI as well as everything else. So if we go down to the depth based effects, here you'll see you've got a variety of options. You can choose exactly what kind of depth you want. So it starts, I think, on four. We're going to use Magic DOF instead because I just prefer the quality of it. And, you know, if we make the effect look even, even as intense as it currently is. All right. The background over there, as you can see, is fairly blurred. Now, if I mouse over this citizen over here, 
and the background behind where the UI would show his name is registered as being in depth. It doesn't recognize that this is user interface. And so the text for citizen is completely blurred. The face is blurred. But if I slightly move, you know, portions of it over like those towers in the background, suddenly they'll be clear a little bit. Hopefully that you hopefully YouTube picks this up. And there because this guy just walked in front of me, the entire thing flashed clear for a second. So it will mess with the UI. Look at my daily here for example. This tiny little bit is clear because it's got that tower there, but in the background it's all blurred as all hell. And for this reason, the depth based effects are really good if you're playing with say the UI completely off. You know, everything's beautiful and there seems to be nothing wrong, but can be a real problem for actual gameplay in certain situations, you know, and it can be kind of kind of weird. So apparently there are works to um, stop bypassing UI. You can kind of add a mask so that, say, your daily never blurs, for example. But uh, really, the solutions to this at the time of this video aren't completely in place. And that's something you may have to consider. It also means that things like God Rays will start applying to various areas of your UI. So you can create really extreme effects, but they only work, for example, while you have the UI off. Or maybe you can create something that's a little bit more moderate in your settings that uh, is actually playable, you know, most of the time. So last to mention is there is a final link, a fourth link of my presets uh, it's a paste bin all you have to do is copy paste everything you see in that master effect H and replace the defaults with that and you'll get what you see in my videos I'm not claiming it's perfect I've really I'm not the best at tweaking settings and there will be uh, continuous updates to them and in fact what I'm really hoping is you guys see this video and create a bunch of your own presets in fact later on in this week I'm gonna be doing a video where I offer a reward of gems as a competition for people to make a really cool reshade preset that I may eventually use in my videos going forward and by doing this what we'll have is a nice database of all kinds of different presets people have made and and there will be a link to that, last of all, in the description too. So you guys can drag and drop, have a look at any Master Effect presets you like, and really make your Guild Wars 2 look fantastic. And uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. That's the way that Reshade works. That's how to install it. These are some examples of some of the really cool things you can do with it. And um, yeah, many thanks to the guys who worked on it, and specifically many thanks to the guy that uh, unlocked it for us to be able to use it in Guild Wars 2. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think, and I guess I'll see you next time.